Our guest today is the President of Togo. I'm very pleased and honored to have him. Mr. President, did the Soviets have any role in the attack in Beirut yesterday? I can't take questions here on that. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, have you or will you ask for Israeli assistance now in Lebanon? I can't take questions now on this. I think there will be plenty of opportunities later. Are relations with Togo good? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> most supportive. You answered a question. You answered the question. Well, it was pertinent to the situation. <laughs>
very pleased to hear. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. He has a 21-foot hole. He has a 21-foot statue that I've just seen in it of John Wayne that goes up in Beverly Hills. 21 feet. It's a 21 foot. And it's got a rotate of the Duke. And it's got a rotate 24 hours a day. And it's, I, I, um, BBC is just a, a half hour, um, a half hour documentary on this sculpture. I have to tell you one more story. Oh, 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 now watch out, maybe. No, no, this isn't a funny story. This is Duke. The Duke and I, before we had ever gotten well acquainted, like you always were with anyone in Hollywood, we were well acquainted. And I was president of the Screen Actors Guild. And it was the time when, the only time we ever had to have a strike. We call a strike, and one we didn't want, but um, it was just forced on us. And of course, some days the abuse that in the press of me as president of the guild was worse than others. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I came home one day and Nancy told me every day when that press was real bad, and as I say, we weren't good friends that you might have expected, the phone would ring in the morning and it would be Duke Wayne to talk to Nancy and tell her thought she might like to hear the voice of a friend and not to be upset by this. No, so no, so keep in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 They go a rough tough. Oh, he was a martyr. People don't think he was a martyr. Someone that could be that sensitive as he one was. One of the most loyal, mm. one of the most respectful, one yeah. of the most marvelous and human people that Tina and I have around. Yeah. I'm going to bring you Sure hope we'll get up at the hill and vote for something. I know. Hello, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to see you. It's good to see you. Jim Cotton, sir. Mr. President. Mr. Cotton, I'll hear you. Mr. Cotton, I'll hear you. Mr. Cotton, you want me to tell you what? Oh, all right. Did you want to step in? Yeah, all right. Oh. Maybe Jim wants to get one by himself. I'd rather have Jim do that. You're her hero. You can step in, Ben. You get one like this. Oh, my goodness. I met you in Birmingham during the campaign last time. Thank God, that's right. Yes. We were upstairs with Jeremiah Denton. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> well, you're just some souvenirs. Well, thank you so much. Ben, it's my presidential crest. And it's very cut Very nice. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Well, it's good to see you. We'll be back tomorrow with Nancy. Yes, Mr. President, Mrs. Collier has been very helpful to us on the women's issue. I know. So we're having some meetings. Well, I'm going to give it a word on <laughs> And I'm going to give a few words on a lot of other issues, too, if I can. That's all right. And we have about 1,700 people that work for us in the family. Maybe I have some grassroots opinion that might have to put a little bit on the job situation. See, I might just solve all your problems. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You've got too many problems. No, no, Our no, prayers no. are with you. I tell you, you've really got them on this level. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Thank you. We came back and coming back in the middle of the night. That's what we saying. I thought you made a very excellent statement. And you know what? It isn't one where there's a a fixed country that you could return. Mm -hmm. It's a terrorist and terrorist group, the kind that just melt back into mm -hmm. the population. You'll never know. Yeah. But we, we're pretty sure we know what the group is. It's all circumstantial evidence, but we believe it's the same element that did this to our embassy. 
say this to you. I believe we have the distinction. First, we are the largest organization of the disabled in this country with 50,000 plus members. I believe we are the only organization in this country of the disabled that has not come out in print attacking this administration. Now, it suggests something that there could be a dispelling of the notion that there is a solid phalanx of the disabled in opposition to this administration. If there was somebody with enough imagination to do it, <laughs> I think we can find the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I think your message was heard. <laughs> well, it's real fun. Thank you, sir. Well, I just was going to uh, walk yeah. across the country, and when I was reading and keeping track of that, I couldn't help but wonder uh, a lot of things. Like, uh, well, I think it is such a thing that you've done, and just what was being talked about here, how much attention this has brought to this very fact. Mr. President, I went up to Baltimore to meet him when he came in, and I can tell you he looks tireder now <laughs> than he did after a 3,000 mile walk. Mr. President, he used seven pairs of shoes. Well, yeah, it was, but it was not only the fatigue and everything, but all the things of uh, strange parts of the world and so forth, and what happened at the end of the day, and the hiking. Uh, I crawled in my motor home and died. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. That's how. Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a pioneer. Be, uh, I wasn't with no, you this you time. No. You, my wife and children were with me for the first half of the trip, and then I had two friends as drivers the second half, and they were five mm -hmm. to ten miles ahead of me down the road. What we were doing out there, Mr. President, was real simple. We were trying to demonstrate in a graphic way that for blind people all over this country that that if we use the tools that we learn to use, like a cane and a dog and a braille, all the things that we need, all we ask is open the door and we'll get it ourselves. We don't need a handout, we just need a hand. Well, okay. It's as simple as that. The gentleman no, over here was just saying yes, and to all of you, uh, I'm heart and soul with you on this because I feel that what we need in this country is a crusade to say with regard to any person with any physical handicap that the answer is rehabilitation. Everyone is capable, as you all are proving, of living very useful lives. And uh, we've got to make that the rule in what we try to accomplish. But Mr. President, we don't necessarily mean or rather need more money and more bureaus to do it because there is a common notion that the more money you spend, the better service you get. That isn't necessarily true. What we really need is a redirection of the money we have, and, and there are ways to do it. Uh, mostly, as some of the bureaus have built bigger and bigger, they've looked inward, not outward. They've gone to more conferences and written more papers and talked to each other. And we know because there's been a distinction, well, there's been no distinction made between service providers, as they're called, or professionals, and organizations of consumers, of blind people. 
That's your speech, Mr. President. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. That's in, what Idaho, for. in Idaho, the agency is working very closely with the blind and trying to do, well, as a blind person, I head that agency. So we're trying to get the things that the blind are asking for. We don't find that that's always the case across the country. And we want this administration to succeed in its effort to cut the costs of handouts and to increase opportunities. Mr. President, we're right in tune with your philosophy that very often the government works against the people. And we know that it works against blind people, federal as well as state. And we think we can teach the government a way of working with the blind people if we can get the opportunity to do so. We've got to get people in this administration to really hear us and to let us help to reform those programs. We know how those reforms can be made if we get the opportunity. Dr. Jernigan over here knows how they can be made, and our organization does. I guess I've got one more thing to say, Mr. President. First time I've ever had the chance to speak to a president of the United <laughs> States, and I'm grateful to have that chance. But what, what we really are up against is this, that we have trouble being heard because once an administration comes in, there is such a big bureaucracy that when people start talking about advocates for the disabled, they go right back to the same bureaucracy which failed in the previous administration and the one before that and all the rest of them. They, they, we are not heard as an organization, yet we're, we're the most active, uh, I think we're as articulate as anybody else in this country. This is... No, we came here with a different idea. As a matter of fact, there are almost 75,000 fewer of those bureaucrats than there were when we came here <laughs> two and a half years ago. But you're right. What happens with a government aid program too often is once it develops an administration and those people begin to see their careers as dependent on the clients of that program, then their effort becomes preserve the bureaucracy, never mind uh, uh, helping people become independent of that program. But when I was governor of California, I'm very proud of the fact that we moved up from 13th among the states to 3rd among the states in the rehabilitation and the putting peaceful up people out in useful occupations, proving that <clears throat> there wasn't any handicap that meant a person could not be uh, independent. And uh, I'm I'm heart and soul with that, and we'll do our best, and we'd, Mr. we'd Mr. be President, pleased to work with Mr. you. Mr. President, thank you very um, much for your time. I, I came up through my whole life through the other way, and I've been blind most of my life. I was ashamed of it. I didn't have the skills or the competence. The, the philosophy of the National Federation of the Blind, which is blind people themselves, sharing simply their experience, their strength, their hope, and their willing to work, not for a handout, but for just being people with human dignity is what made me feel good about a blind person, and that's why I walked across this country to say, I'm comfortable with it, I can do it, just give us a chance, and we can do it a day at a time and a step at a time. Mm -hmm. I had a question, mm -hmm. Mr. No, you can't embarrass Did me. You, were you wearing the shirt flag upside down for a reason? I have no idea what's even on there. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned it around because upside down Maybe I the flag is a distress signal. Oh, I'm distressed. Sure is <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank all of you. Thank That's you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for your time. Very much appreciate it.